Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron. Uh, if you consider yourself a hi-fi enthusiast, audiophile, music lover, music junkie, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when the next video drops. In today's sound clips with commentary, we're going to be, oh, putting the AVOs through their paces. I felt inspired right after doing the Bose 901s to get these guys out onto the dance floor and see what these things can do. I feel like there are some similarities in the design goal. I, I, I think there are some similarities. Either way, these things are a blast. And so let's have some fun. All right, treble impressions. Let's go. It's interesting, you would think that with these woofers shooting up at the ceiling that, that the sound stage would sound weird, that hi-hats would be playing from the ceiling and things like that. No, <laughs> no, that's not what's happening here. Most of the frequencies that you're hearing coming out of that woofer are going to be omnidirectional. They become omnidirectional. And so the staging that we're hearing in front of us the hi-hats, the drum kit, everything remains intact. I don't have a drum kit up here shooting down at me. That's not at all what I'm hearing. It actually sounds correct. The location of everything is where it should be. So yeah, let's move on. Okay, there's no way that the microphones are going to capture the essence of the AVOs and what makes these things so darn fun. There, there is some air and some extension in this recording, and with the AVOs, the edge of it is over to the back of my left ear. It just, it's everywhere. It's like you are in the recording, and it does this thing that is just... It's, it's big, but it's not fake sounding. It's almost as if you just dive right into the darn recording and at the same time, I'm getting all of the clarity that I want because I have two tweeters that are pointing right at me. And so when it comes to the harmonic structure of everything on the top end, I'm getting that clarity. I'm getting that presence. It's crystal clear. I can hear all of the details that's happening at that last part. But on top of that, there's some reverb things that are just kind of being shot off over here and over here that I'm not getting with other designs. And again, this is where the AVOs do some pretty amazing things and just some downright fun things that little treats, little fireworks that are going off where you have this reverb that just kind of shoots off from one of the drum hits and you're like, okay, well that was somewhere over there and that was somewhere over there. And so when it comes to these things that are related to scale, how big can these speakers actually sound? Well, we're only dealing with two drivers and so far they can sound quite big. There's no doubt about that. That trail at the end, that reverb trail, you hear it. So 
we're talking about things within the time domain that gives you an idea of how big was this room that these acoustics were just playing in, you can easily hear that with the AVOs. It sounds the same as if we had a traditional designed speaker in front of us. It's, it's playing by the rule books. It's actually doing things the right way. And so what we end up with is clarity where there needs to be clarity. So this is one of those tracks that is recorded a little bit hot and what I'm listening for is do we end up with bright speakers because bright speakers will show themselves on this track and no, no we don't. Uh, that does not sound fatiguing, it does not sound bright, it does not sound like a big mess. I can hear clearly what we have here is a hot recording and the AVOs are just saying well, what, do you, what else did you want from me? I'm going to give you a hot recording, but I'm not going to add to the top end and make it unbearable. So here's our grungy guitar track that we use just to kind of show off what does not the best sounding recording sound like with whatever speakers that we're you know running through and in this case it's the AVOs. That actually sounded pretty darn good. What I was missing in that track was some muscle. So in the event where I had the H-frame open baffle subs in this party on the dance floor, I think that that would have been incredible. We would have gone from, that sounds pretty darn good, to, wow, that actually sounds awesome. Not my favorite. To be frank with you, you know, I think a, a lot of you guys might think like, Ron is never going to say anything bad about a GR Research speaker. <laughs> you know, as if Danny's like floating me $20 bills every day. Just keep saying nice things, Ron. We got kits to sell. No, that was not my favorite track on these. And it all comes down to the horns. The horns on the AVOs sounded a bit thin. And one of the things that I've talked about with the AVOs before is this might be a drawback to this particular design is when we start talking about presence, you know, kind of having that brassy type bite and presence, it's kind of hard to get that out of these guys. I don't hear it like I do with the Oticas or the Sapphires or speakers that are in a completely different league. And I would go as far as to say even the XLS Encore in the upper mid-range top end extension, eh, maybe not top end extension, upper mid-range, you are gonna get a bit more presence. And so horns, they're not gonna sound absolutely amazing with these particular speakers. No commentary needed, that sounded great. Our guitar friend that is normally back by the lamp is actually pulled forward a little bit. That's interesting. Not a bad thing, just an observation. Not as far back as he normally is. So 
So this is where the AVOs show off again. These keys, like this uh, synthy type keys thing that happens, it has scale. It actually sounds huge and it sounds on the outside where it belongs from the rest of the stuff that is playing in the sound stage. And so it kind of just wraps around everything and it's a cool effect. This is where the AVOs are just a lot of fun. And I think that most people that are getting into hi-fi and they're fine with the idea of do it yourself, this kit is 249 bucks. You obviously have to supply the wood, but back in the day when I made these, I didn't even have a, a table saw and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. So I just went down to Woodworker Source, which is a big step up from Home Depot. And those guys looked at the cabinet plans for the AVOs and they're like, yeah, man, you buy the wood from us and it'll be like 20 bucks for us to help you out. Easy, easy. Anyone can put these things together. They're not that hard to do. And I had some fun with, you know, paint and making them look cool and some veneer. And I think they look pretty rad. The drums are somewhere in the backyard, so somebody needs to let that guy in because it's freaking hot outside, for crying out loud. We have our tin whistle doing its thing the way that it should, and it has clarity, and it punches through the mix, and my goodness me, that had scale. I mean, that sounds like a big performance. That's one of those moments where you're like, wow, hi-fi is really cool. These deliver the goods, for sure. I think that both the Sapphires and the Enexoticas do a much better job of depth and layering, clarity with the Cassinets, if that's what those are, hand clackies guys, Cassinets, and uh, the Sitar. The placement of everything in here, it does sound deep for sure, that is the arena of the AVOs, but I'm not getting that start and stop action of where I can actually localize where everything is placed. It just kind of sounds like this big, deep type valley thing going on, which is fun, but I've heard, I've heard this track done just a little bit better than what the AVOs can do. Needless to say, what are we talking about here? These are very affordable speakers to build, and we can't expect these to perform on the same level as, you know, the big boys. Maybe a little bit on the thin side in mid-range. Maybe just a little bit on the thin side. Not quite as much heft and weight that, look, I mean, if you want meat on the bones and you want bloom in the mid-band, probably not the speakers for you. Yeah, so pretty much the same thing. I've heard more heft and weight with this track, but again, everything above, let's say lower mid-range, mid-bass and below, everything above that is a blast.
even though we have woofers that are shooting up, the piano's not up here, it's not over there, it's over here, right where it should be, and it's got some distance between it and the rest of the mix. So, yeah. All right, mid-bass, here we go. Outside of the fact that I'm not getting a, a ton of confidence really down low, the mid bass that they are playing sounds fine. So for me, that actually sounded quite nice. A little bit more rich and full-bodied than the last track, for sure. And with everything else that is playing outside of the mid-bass region, everything on top, well, that all sounded wonderful. One of the things that I've been hearing with this track, and I heard it with the DFR 52s, is can I hear any kind of resonance? And in the case of the AVOs, I cannot hear resonance, and I've never been able to hear clearly what would be resonance coming out of these speakers. They are braced really well, and they are lined with no res. So in the congas and the bongos, I'm listening for some weight, some body. And yeah, I'm getting some of that. I mean, you could get by and keep in mind, I have these things five feet into the room. In the event where maybe you're doing three feet, your results might vary. You might actually be able to get a little bit more weight, a little bit more body in the mid band. And that's not unique to the AVOs. You could say the same thing about the DFR 52s is, I talked a lot about, hey, they don't have a ton of bass, but I am also bringing them way out into the room because I want to hear soundstage, and I don't want to sacrifice soundstage. If you decide to do the AVOs and all you have is three feet, four feet, somewhere in there, I'm expecting that you might have a little bit richer mid-bass than what we're hearing right now. That drippy reverb, that guitar that is just soaked in reverb, sounds freaking epic. It just, this is again where the AVOs are just giving you some fairy dust in the music is what they're doing. That's not what they're doing, but <laughs> you guys know what I'm saying. There's something really intoxicating about how that guitar sounded, and then just when you think, that's the star of the show, then you have this organ that comes in that is outside of that, that is just, it has scale, and it just sounds killer, it sounds fun. All right, bass, here we go. I'll say this, for the bass that they are providing, the woofers are certainly not crapping out on us, which is good. So you're at least getting the resolution in the bass, and that's a good thing. Paper cone drivers, and it sounds good. Maybe 
maybe a little bit bloated, maybe just a little bit bloaty or farty sounding. Not the best track in the world for the AVOs and both the Spatials and the Anexoticas with H-Frames, they make that song sound like a completely different song than what these things are able to do, but that wasn't too bad. If I had H-Frame open baffle subs in here, then the neighbors would be knocking on the door saying, hey, can we come in and hang out with you because your house is so much cooler than ours. It was okay. You gotta have subs with these. If you really want to dig down deep, you gotta have subs. Those drum hits that are soaked in reverb, they're just miles away. I mean, <laughs> I'm supposed to be talking about bass. Who gives a rat's rear end? Let's just make it clear. If you really want deep bass, the AVOs are not gonna give you deep, deep bass. Get some subs and get the open baffle H-frame subs. They're the best subs on the planet. But, <laughs> Everything above the bass, mid bass, leading into mid range and above that with the AVOs, it's so much fun to listen to. You know, it's funny, even with the drivers pointing up, I am still able to hear texture and tone in the bass, which breaks my brain how that is possible. But it's, look, it's not as, as noticeable or clear or as defined than my Enexoticas where I've got, you know, drivers loaded to the teeth staring back at me. It's not as clear or as easy to hear as I can with the Enexoticas, but I can hear it. I hear texture and tone in the bass with the AVOs, which is crazy. Female vocals, here we go. I don't want to be loved by you, be loved by you. I don't need to be hurt or rescued, not by you. Not so close, you're eating my spirit. Is it as clear and as defined as a traditional, let's just say a traditional type speaker where all of the drivers are mounted on the front of the baffle and they're face forward? No. The vocals do sound a little bit larger, a little bit bigger than what I think they're supposed to be. vocals do sound a little bit larger than life. They do. They sound just a bit bigger than what she is supposed to sound like. But 
again, I'm still getting some clarity where it just doesn't sound smeary. It doesn't sound that way to me. I still have some spatial cues in her voice where I'm right there with her. I've got some details in her voice as she's singing that I'm like, okay, this is, this is pretty believable, maybe a little bit exaggerated, but it's still good. You tell me you're scared. I don't notice the exaggeration as much with this track that I did with the previous female tracks. That's interesting. That actually sounded really good, combined with the fact that the AVOs are strutting their stuff with the sound in the recording, the room, and just how spacious everything sounds. They're doing a great job with that. Let's try this other male vocal. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I That one sounded great. So both of the male vocal tracks to me sounded, they sounded pretty much spot on. Maybe a little bit exaggerated in the vocals, a little bit smeared, but I think that there is enough clarity that I'm getting out of the AVOs with vocals that it still works. It still works and it sounds great. So yeah. The AVOs, GR Research AVOs, I'll have links down below if you want to pick up a kit. Um, the kit that I went with is the standard kit, $249. You can upgrade the caps and uh, the parts inside. You know me, I, I am one of those guys that would say I do think that parts can make a difference, and I regret not doing that when I bought these, which was years ago. I think that if I knew then what I know now, I just would have gone with the better parts and called it a day knowing how much I was going to love the AVOs because these are not going anywhere. I, these are like the type of speaker that are lifers. You just always have to have an evening with the AVOs every now and then. All right, guys, make sure you subscribe, uh, hit the bell notification so you know when the next video drops, and we will see you guys in the next video.